and welcome to the Lounge Show. I'm Rudranil with our weekly menu of art, films, literature and food. Yes, most of all, food, at least on this show. Here's what we have. A cool new art show where the walls of the gallery become the painter's canvas. We review Nagesh Kukunu's new film Ashai. Break our fast in the holy month of Ramzan in Old Delhi. How to make a beautiful Chinese dish. And it's okay, it's fruity, a hint of earthiness. We discover how to smell out a good wine. It's an art show without framed paintings picked out by spotlights. Just the artists letting loose on the white walls of Galleria Espace. It's Delhi-based artist Manjunath Kamath's latest experiment, mixing graffiti and painting techniques to create works of art that will be washed out once the show is over. Artist B. Manjunath Kamath's ongoing show at Gallery S. Pass in New Delhi is the result of an unusual project. For one week, he drew on the white walls of the gallery without any prior preparation, while friends and visitors dropped in to take a look and chat with him. The results of Kamath's week-long effort are on display until the 4th of September, after which the walls of the gallery will be painted again. As Kamath points out, there is ample precedence in India for creating art that is temporary. Reminds me like we have this kind of thing in Indian culture, like Durga Puja or Ganesh Puja. They make a huge uh, sculpture of Ganesha and Durga. Finally, we have to immerse. So that particular time is important where you can celebrate it. The idea for the project is rooted in Kamath's childhood memories of trips to his ancestral home near Mangalore. When we go to our ancestral house, where like where uh, they had a uh, cow shed, the, those walls are mine. Like you know, that is my sketchbook kind of. Like I used to draw on that wall. It's continuously. And till now, I have this habit. Wherever I sit, I scribble. Conscious subconscious has been documented on camera. So it will not disappear once the walls of Gallery Espas get a fresh coat of paint. He has always made slightly offbeat, small budget English movies capturing the feel of ordinary people in urban and small town India. And after the runaway success of his 2005 release Iqbal, Nagesh Kukunur is back with a new offering. Ashae is a mishmash of Bollywood masala and black humor, a break from Kukunur's usual way of storytelling. Sanjukta Sharma finds out how he fared. Nagesh Kukunur's Ashae begins with promise. But before you can settle into it, the film totters into implausible plot points, bad performances and contrived scenes. This has got to be one of Kukunur's worst films. And John Abraham's utter lack of acting skills of course makes things worse. Rahul, played by Abraham, is a bookie who has a windfall of three crores. He has it all going until he discovers he has lung cancer. The perfect life he looked forward to with his girlfriend falls apart and one day he leaves for Shelter of Hope, a hospice for terminally ill people. There Rahul meets many others who are also awaiting their death. The story of Ashaya had immense potential. This is material for black humor and great irony. But Kukunu chooses instead a hodgepodge of Bollywood masala, black humor and some serious takes on disease and death, which just doesn't work. There are dream sequences that take the story to the realm of fantasy, but without technical finesse, these cutaways fall flat. Ultimately, Ashai is like chicken soup for the soul gone ten times more ludicrous. John Abraham has tried his best. It's one of the best roles he could have asked for. But the best he can do in the film is actually look good in an Indiana Jones costume. Ashai is also a very long film, the second half dragging on to an ambiguous climax. But by the end, you just don't care. It's one of those films with an original story which goes painfully wrong in execution. Now you can catch centuries of history at work in and around the Jama Masjid area in Old Delhi on any given day. But if that day falls on the holy month of Ramzan, then the atmosphere is truly electrifying. Amrita Roy took a walk in the by lanes and broke her fast to soak in the spirit of iftar. It 
It's the second Sunday of Ramzan and old Delhi is a buzz as a beehive. As the time for iftar draws near, faithfuls gather at the Jama Masjid. Fruit sellers, kebab cheese, pakode walas, children in their Sunday best. The narrow lanes come alive as dusk falls over the ancient neighborhood. At 6:55, two cannon shots are fired to signal the beginning of iftar. The members of the online community Eat Out in Delhi or EOID have joined the devout in sharing bread and sampling the feast on offer. The EOID is headed by Himanshu Kumar, an economist and an epicure. Uh, I was very active on a social networking site called Orchid, um, and we uh, set up a group out there, you know, just as a place to have discussions, uh, you know. And uh, I just, you know, it took me like three seconds of thinking to call it eating out in Delhi. It wasn't a very, you know, I didn't think of a trademark or a big name or anything. Across the masjid's gate number one is Gali Kababia, where Kareem's and Al Jawahar are located. Of course, that's where the believers and the non-believers alike. Head to for a festive meal. This is an iftar walk. Uh, this has now become a bit of a uh, bit of a tradition in EOID uh, over the last four years. It's lovely to come to the Jama Masjid um, and break the fast of the day with the people out there. You find thousands of people out there coming together, and it's a, quite a spectacle. The famous old Delhi cuisine doesn't get more authentic than here, and iftar gives you the perfect excuse to ignore the diet for a day. I could just get my hands on one of those kebabs right now, but there's more food to talk about. Here's a little antidote to all that spicy, juicy meat. Chef Sam Wong shows you how to make a quick, crunchy vegetarian dish, a mix of greens, sesame, and soy, just the perfect combination. My dish of today, today is the asparagus and bamboo shoots in the sesame chili paste. First of all, let me demonstrate to you how we make this uh, chili, uh, this uh, sesame chili paste. We need uh, 75 grams of red onion chops, 75 grams of garlic chop. The first two items we have to fry in hot oil until it becomes crispy. And then after that, we have to add 25 grams of spring onion, 5 grams of sesame seed with 1 tablespoon of light soy sauce and 1 tablespoon of chingyang vinegar. We toast it well, mix it well and we become a, t a paste in this way. First of all, the asparagus and the bamboo soup has to be boiled for at least 2 minutes. Once the water gets boiled, we have to blanch the bamboo shoots and the raw asparagus. So once the oil or the water gets boiled, we have to immediately remove the asparagus. So using the same wok, we have to use some vegetable stock. A little bit of vegetable stock, approximately is a four tablespoon and some light soya, also four tablespoon, and then we have to add uh, around approximately one full tablespoon of sesame paste. Then only we add the bamboo shoot and asparagus, and braise for one minute. And then after that, we have to start the starching. And finally, with a little bit of oil. So this is my dish for the day, asparagus, bamboo soup in a sesame chili paste. So we've got the food out of the way, how about the wine? The act of identifying a good wine is an industry in itself, but like good food, the first test for a wine is its aroma. Rachna Nakra went to a wine smelling session to find out exactly what to look for. This collective urge to sniff is obviously with a reason, to learn to appreciate fine wine. A group of wine enthusiasts called All Things Fine brought in Friedrich Zantmann, an expert from France, this week to teach a select bunch of about 30 people how to distinguish different flavors in wine using this kit. Le Nez du Vin, which literally means the nose of wine, is a collection of natural fragrances that come in a pack of 54 small bottles with flavors ranging from vanilla to pepper. Sometime when we take just a very easy, very easy aroma like uh, the citrus. It's difficult for us to name it because we are not used. We never learn to smell. In fact, we have learned how to walk, how to talk, how to write, but why not to smell? 
The kit would soon be available in high-end wine stores in the country at approximately 350 euros per box set. So the next time you want to smell a glass of wine and say something intelligent, here's the key to getting educated. Now that's all we have for you on this show. See you later next week.